It was a virus that destroyed lives and livelihoods. Its legacy will be felt for years to come. Ranjit Chandrabala was a London bus driver, one of 27 to die from COVID-19 in the first three months of the pandemic. His daughter, Leshi, expects answers. He contracted COVID in April, so had, you know, certain measures been in place, you know, at his uh, depot and on his buses, maybe he would still be alive. He was definitely left exposed. He had no PPE to speak of. They gave him um, gloves and that was it, and hand sanitizer. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Decisions made during the pandemic are about to come under intense scrutiny. For the first time in our history, the government is going to step in and help to pay people's wages. We've tried to throw a protective ring around our care homes. It's a process that will take years and cost at least tens of millions of pounds. This inquiry is going to go much deeper than simply weighing up one policy choice against another. It's going to look at the government's conduct during the pandemic and ask if that matched what the country would reasonably expect from its leaders in a time of crisis. Soon the focus will be on the government's decision making, including policies such as eat out to help out, pushed by the then Chancellor Rishi Sunak, which is being criticised by some government advisers. So taking your foot off the brake is one thing, but putting your foot on the accelerator of the epidemics was, in my view, a very different thing. And um, I couldn't see any, any reason for doing it that, you know, I just think, thought that at the time that it would kickstart the next wave. The inquiry's opening has been overshadowed by Boris Johnson's resignation from Parliament following an investigation into alleged lockdown breaches and the controversy over government WhatsApp messages. But for bereaved families, nothing must be allowed to distract the inquiry as it begins its search for the truth. Ashish Joshi, Sky News.